Hello and welcome to tonight's tour portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say your customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord, our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from, from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Tonight's Torah portion is Lech Lecha. Go forth. Genesis 12, 1 through 17, 27. Prophets is Isaiah 40, 27 through 41, 16. Our Brit Hadesha, Brit Hadesha is Matthew 1, 1 through 17, Acts 7, 1 through 8, Romans 3, 19, 6 through 6, Galatians 3, 15 through 26, 5, 1 through 6, Colossians 2, 11 through 15, Hebrews 7, 1 through 9, 11, 1 through 2. Genesis 12, 1, 17 through 27. Now Yahweh said to Abraham, Go forth, go from your country and be in your kindred in your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name, name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in all you... And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as Yahweh had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered. And the people that, had, that they had acquired in Haran. And they set up to go out to the land of Canaan. And when they came to Morach, at that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then Yahweh appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to Yahweh, who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country of east, on, on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to Yahweh and called upon the name of Yahweh. And Abraham journeyed on, still going onward to Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, and when the Egyptians see you, they shall say, This is his wife, and they shall kill me. But they will let you live. Say to them, Say, are you, say you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you that my life may be spared for your sake. When Abraham entered Egypt, and Egyptians saw that the, the woman was very beautiful, and when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into the Pharaoh's house. For her sake, he dwelt with, dealt well with Abraham. And he, was, he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. <coughs> But Yahweh afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. So Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And the Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. So Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, with Lot with him. Into Negev. Now Abraham was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold, so, and he sojourned on from Negev as far as Bethel to take the, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abraham called upon the name of Yahweh and Lot, who went out, who went with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents. So that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's 
Lot's livestock. At the time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. So Abraham, then Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the land to the if you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his, up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was it was well watered everywhere, like the garden Yahuwah, like the garden of Yahuwah, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zor. This was before Yahuwah the Zor destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of, of the valley, and moved his tent as far as Saddam. Now the men of Saddam were wicked, great sinners against Yahweh. Yahweh said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from them, Lift up your eyes, and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring can also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abraham moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Merm, uh, I guess like Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to Yahweh. In the days of Armaphel, king of Sh Shinar, Ariok, king of Elysir, uh, Shadalomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goyim. These kings were made. made these kings made war with Burah, king of Saddam, Ber Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinanab, king of Adma, Sh Sh Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela. That is Zor. And all these joined forces in the valley of Sidma, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they have served Shedilomer. But in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year Shedilomer. And the kings who were with them came and defeated the Rephaim. And Lashtaroth, Karnan. The Zuzim and Ham and e Eman and Sheva Karathium and the Horites in their hill country of Ser, as as far as El Paran in the land of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to Im Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and defeated all the countries of the Amalekites. And the Amorites who were dwelling in the Hazazon Tamar. Then the king of Saddam, the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adam, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and they joined the they joined battle in the valley of Saddam with Shedalomer, <coughs> king of Elam, title king of Goyim, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and the Arioch, king of Elizer. Four kings against five. Now that the valley of Saddam was full of bitumen pits, as the kings of Saddam and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them, and the rest fell into the rest fled into the hill country. So the enemy took all the possessions of Saddam and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, the son of Abraham's brother who was dwelling in Saddam and his possessions, and they went their way. Then one who had escaped and came to, and told Abraham of Hebrew, Abraham the Hebrew, who was living in the Oaks of Murmur, the Amorite's brother of Eshkol and Enar. These were the allies of Abraham when Abraham heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he led forth his Trained men, born in the house, born in his house, 318 of them, and went and pursued as far as Dan, and he divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them and pursued them to Hobah north of Damascus. Then he brought back all the possessions, 
and also brought back his kinsman Lot with his possessions and the women of the people. After his return from the defeat of Shedor Loma, and the kings who were with him, the king of Saddam went out to meet him in the valley of Shivan, that is, kings, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of Elohim the Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed, by Abraham, blessed be Abraham by Elohim Most High. Possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be Elohim Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything, and the king of Saddam said to Abraham, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Saddam, I have lifted my hand to Yahweh, Elohim Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or sandal strap or anything that is yours. Lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten. And a share of the men who went with me, let Enner, Eshkel, and Mamre take their share. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very good. But Abraham said to said, O oh, Yahweh, Elohim, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Elizer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a, matter, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of Yahweh came to him, This man shall be, not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed Yahweh, and he count, counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am Yahweh, who brought you out of, from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. And he said, O Yahweh Elohim, how am I to know that I shall possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought them all and cut them in half, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcass, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell, fell on Abraham, and behold, Dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. Then Yahweh said to Abraham, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in the land that is not theirs, and will be servants there, and they will be afflicted four hundred years. But I will bring judgment on the nations that they serve, and afterwards they shall come out with great possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. And they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites was, is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your offspring I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Re Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female servant. His name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, Yahweh has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abraham had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abraham, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abraham, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, 
And when she saw that she had conceived, she took, she looked on me with contempt. May Yahweh judge between you and me, but Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. And Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of Yahweh found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, and a spring on the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of Yahweh said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The anger of Yahweh also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of Yahweh said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and shall soon bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because Yahweh has listened to your affliction. You shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she, so she called the name of Yahweh who spoke to her, You are Elohim of Sin. For she said, Truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Ber Lohai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abraham a son, and Abraham called the name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. And Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. When Abraham was 99 years old, Yahweh appeared to him and said to him, I am Elohim mighty, almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and Elohim said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be called. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I may make. I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring and. <coughs> And you throughout your generations for an everlasting covenant. To be Elohim to you and to your offspring after you. And I'll give to you and to your offspring after you your, the land of your sojournings. All of the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their Elohim. After Elohim said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant. And you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant with which you shall keep. Keep me and your and you keep me between me and you and your offspring after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you will be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or Bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. But he who is born in your house, and he who is brought, bought with your money, he shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his fortune shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. King of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, <coughs> who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to Elohim, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Elohim said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear to you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. 
When he had finished talking with him, Elohim went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael his son and all those born in his house or bought with his money every male among the men of Abraham's house. And he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day. As Elohim had said to him, Abraham was ninety years old, ninety-nine years old, when he was circumcised in his flesh. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in, in the flesh of his foreskin. <clears throat> that very day Abraham his son Ishmael were circumcised. All the men of his house, those born in the house, and those bought with the money from a foreigner were circumcised with him. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 27, 41 through 16. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from Yahweh, and my right is disregarded by my Elohim. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Yahweh is everlasting Elohim, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He under His understanding is unsearchable. <clears throat> he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, be increased strength. He increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for Elohim shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the peoples renew their strength, and let them approach. Let them... Then let them speak. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who stirred <coughs> Who stirred up one from the east? Whom victory meets at every step? He gives up nations before him, so that he tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his word sword. Like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them and passes on safely. By pass his feet have not trod. Who has performed and done this? Calling the generations from the beginning. I Yahweh the first. And with the, the last I am he. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and come. Everyone helps his neighbor. And says to his brother be strong. The craftsman strengthens the goldsmith. And he... <coughs> He who smooths with the hammer, him who strikes the anvil, saying of the soldering, It is good. And they strengthen it with nails so that it cannot be moved. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your Elohim. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, right hand. Behold, all who are increased against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall not be shall be as nothing at all. For I, your Yahweh, your Elohim, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I am the one who helps you. Fear not, you who you worm, Jacob, your men of Is you men of Israel, I am the one who helps you, declares Yahweh. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I make of you a threshing sledge. New, sharp, and having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like shay. <coughs> like chaff. And you shall winnow them. And the wind shall carry them away, and the tempest shall scatter them. And you shall rejoice in Elohim. You shall rejoice in Yahweh. And the Holy One of Israel you shall give, give glory. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling good today, so... Matthew 1, 1 through 17. The book of genealogy of Yahushua, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob, the Jacob, the father of Judah, 
and his brothers of Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerad, by Tamar, the Perez, the father of Hezron, Hezron, the father of Ram, Ram, the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab, the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Salmon, Salmon, the, the father of Boaz, by Rahab, Boaz, the father of Abed, by Ruth, Abed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of the David, the king. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah. And Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abaha, Abaha, the father of Asaph, and Asaph, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, Joram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Haz Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Emmas, Emmas, the father of Josiah, Josiah, the father of Jehoniah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Zekoniah, the father of Shek Shatel, <coughs> and Shatel, the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abuid, the Buid, the father of Elikim, Elikim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Akim, Akim the father of Elud, Elid the father of Elizer, and Elizer the father of Mathan, Mathan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, Joseph, Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom Yeshua was born, who is called Hamashiach. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation of Babylon to Hamashiach, 14 generations. Acts 7, 1 through 8. And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen, Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The Elohim... <coughs> The Elohim of glory appeared to our father Abraham and when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him, Go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, Elohim removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no, inherit <coughs> no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length. He promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no children. And Yahweh spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others, who would enslave them and afflict them for them four hundred years. But I will judge the nations that they serve, said Elohim, and after, <coughs> after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. Forgive me. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to Elohim, for by the works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of Elohim has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of Elohim through faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, for all who believe. But there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Elohim, and are justified by His grace a gift through the redemption of that is in Yeshua HaMashiach. Whom Elohim put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This is to show Elohim's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he has but passed over former sins. It is to show his righteousness at the present time so that he may be just and the justifier of one who has faith in Yeshua. But what becomes of our boasting? 
it is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works. But no, by the faith, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is Elohim the Elohim of Jews only? Is he not the Elohim of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since Elohim is one. Who will just, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith? Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. What then shall we say was gained? Abraham our forefather according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by the works, he has something to boast about, but not before Elohim. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed Elohim and was, it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works. His wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does now to the one who works, um, and to the one who does not work, but believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessings of the one of the one to whom Elohim counts righteousness apart from the works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, and those whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. <coughs> is the blessing then only for the circumcised, or also for the uncircumcised? For we say that faith was counted in Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after. But before he was circumcised, he, was, he received the sign of the circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believed, believed without being circumcised, so that the righteousness would be counted to them as well. And to make him the father of the, um, of the circumcised who are not m merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps to the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. <coughs> For the promise to Abraham and his offspring was that he would be the he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is what for it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs. Faith is null and promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on the grace and be guaranteed to all its offspring, not only the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the Elohim in whom he believes, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. And hope he believed against hope. That he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he, was, when he considered his own body, which was, a good, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the bare, bareness of of Sarah's womb. <clears throat> no unbelief made him wave, made him wavering concern of the promise of Elohim, but he grew strong in his faith, as he gave glory to Elohim, fully convicted that Elohim was, was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness, but the words it was counted for him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead Yeshua our Lord, who was delivered up from, for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Therefore, since <coughs> we have been justified by faith, we have peace with Elohim through our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hopes that the glory of Elohim, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the sufferings produces endurance, and endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because Elohim's love 
has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given who has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Hamashiach died for the ungodly. <coughs> Galatians three fifteen through twenty six. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now that the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring, it does not say into offspring. It does not say into offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Hamashiach. This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterward does not annul the co a covenant previously ratified by Elohim, so as to make it void, make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise. But Elohim gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions. Until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. It was put in place through the angels by an intermediary. Now the intermediary implies more than one. But Elohim is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of Elohim? Certainly not. For if a law has been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Yeshua HaMashiach might be given to those who believe. Now therefore, now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until, coming, until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until our Mashiach came in, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now the faith has come, and we are we are no longer under the gar a guardian. For in Yeshua HaMashiach you are all sons of Elohim through faith. Galatians 5, 1-6 For freedom HaMashiach has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit against the Submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, our Mashiach will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Hamashiach, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from his grace. For he, through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hopes of righteousness. For in Yeshua HaMashiach neither circumcision nor circumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. Colossians 2 11-15 In him also you are circumcised with a circumcision made it but without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of HaMashiach having been buried with him in the baptism in which you were also raised with him through the faith and power working through the working of Elohim who raised him from the dead and you who are dead in your trespasses and uncircumcised flesh Elohim made alive together with him having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands that he set aside Nailing it to the cross, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hebrews 7, 1-19 For this Mel Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him and said to Abraham, A portion, a tenth of everything, he is first, by translation of his name, King of the Righteousness. And then he was also King of Salem, that is, King of Peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginnings of days nor ends of life. By resembling the son of Elohim, he continues a priest forever. See how great this man was to whom Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the spoils. And those descendants of Levi who received a priestly office have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers. Though these are also descended from Abraham, but this man who does not have his descent <coughs> from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him 
who had the promises. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. In the one, in the one case, tithes are received by mortal men, but in the other case, by one of whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Levi himself, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, for he was still the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. Now perfection had been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for under it people, for under it the people received the law. What further need would there have been for another priest to rise after the order of Melchizedek, rather than the one named after the order of Aaron? For when there was a there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the laws as well. For the one of for the one of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no one has ever served at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, and in connection with that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. This becomes even more evident when another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest, not on the basis of legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For it is witness of him. You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because it, it's weakened and, and, and uselessness. Weakness and uselessness. For the law made nothing perfect, but on the other hand, a better hope is introduced, through which we draw near Elohim. Hebrews 11, 1 through 12. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their com commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created, created by the word of El Elohim, so that it was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered Elohim a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteousness, as righteous. Elohim commended him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he could not see death. He should not see death. And he was not found because Elohim had taken him. Now, now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased Elohim. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever should would draw near to Elohim must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith Noah, being warned by Elohim concerning events as yet unseen, in the reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household, by this he commended the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in a land of promise as in a land of as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For I was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is Elohim. By faith Sarah herself received power to conceive, and when she was past age, she, since she considered him faithful who had promised, therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born to sin descendants, as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable, innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Sorry again for all the stuttering, but the throat's been driving me crazy. Blessed art thou, Lord God, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set our everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord, O Lord, giver of the Torah. 